guys. What's up, man? So, quite a few contracts again tonight. Let's yeah. start off with uh, Cheyenne Bays. Is she everything this show is about? Yeah, yeah, she's awesome. Uh, loved her fight. Loved her fighting style, her striking, her ground. And you got to remember, too, the girl that she went up against tonight is one of Lausanne's. Um, so, you know, her ground game's tight. She came out after the cage and went through your Instagram. What, yeah. what was that about? She said, I've been DMing you for two years. You never responded to me. I said, uh, go ahead, pull it up in there. And so uh, she hit follow. It's, uh, it's way too early to say this, but out of all of them tonight, perhaps the one with maybe the it factor, there's just something about her swearing in the cage. It's just seemed... All of it. She's tough. She's, she's, she's a little badass. And uh, I like her fighting style. I think she's talented. She's only 25 years old. She's only going to get better. Not even in her prime yet, and just everything about her I like. Orion Kose, I think that's the closest I've seen you to not giving someone a contract after the incident in the end of round two. Yeah. What Did anybody else notice that, or was it just me? I was surprised Matt Dixon didn't hit him for doing it. But. That's exactly what I said. I said, what's crazy is he looked up the clock, three seconds left, he decided it was over, so he touches gloves, and the other guy touches his gloves and doesn't keep going. Huge missed opportunity by him. Uh, yeah, listen, man, you gotta, when you come here, you, you have to be a killer to get a contract, man. And he, he's damn lucky he did what he did. And I swear to God, after he did that in the second round, I said, I don't give a shit what this guy does from here on out. I ain't picking him. I'm not picking him. And then I calmed down a little bit and <laughs> the third round was damn good. Cause I thought he was done in the second when he did that. When you start looking at the clock, especially if you're here, I thought he was done. But good performance in the third round. I mean, he kept going, kept going, and Dixon tiny kept Yeah, going. changed my mind. That's a hard Hopefully thing he never does do. that again. That's a hard thing to do as well sometimes. Yeah, it's a very hard thing to do. You are correct. So in the main, we had Lewis Kose, and it's almost the complete opposite to his brother, right? Instead of taking his time to get involved, he just started straight away. I mean... That yeah. guy's a savage. That guy's a killer. Has nothing but killer instinct. And you can see it in his record, and you can see it when he fights. That guy comes out to hurt you. 100%, those are the kind of guys that I absolutely love. Do you keep the brother thing going for the future? Do you try and book them on the same event for their UFC debuts? It's kind of a fun thing, right? So you want to know what's hilarious is, I didn't realize they were brothers <laughs> till I was reading the second guys, uh, you know, the main events. I didn't even realize. I don't study these guys or know anything about them when I come in tonight. I don't want to know anything about them. I don't want to know their stories. Sometimes I cheat and I, and I look at stuff when it, uh, when it's posted, but I don't like to know anything. So I didn't even realize they were brothers till I was reading uh, the, the, the main event. To be fair, of all the stories you probably want to avoid, those two have had like the gnarliest backstory I think we've seen so right. far. Right, that's what Sean was telling me tonight. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and the, the last guy who got a contract, Josh Parisian, I mean, he was here before. He's, a, yep. he's one of those guys you were saying last week, you know, they're older, they need a chance, right? So is that the same sort of thing? He's 31 years old. He's done this twice. He's passed every time. Listen, he didn't win tough, but, you know, even getting into tough and doing tough is, is hard to do. And to come onto this show twice and win, I'm going to give him a shot. He's 31 years old, and let's see what he can do. And, 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 you know, if you look at him physically, imagine if that guy gets into the PI and those guys get their hands on him for a little while. I'm just curious. I want, I want to see what he can do. The guy's paid his dues, and I'd, I'd like to see what he's got. He's got good movement as well for that yeah, size. So he, he does. And he's a killer, too. The guy goes in to finish. He's right. not trying to grab your legs and hold on and squeak out a decision. He's a finisher. He, he, you know. Now he's 13 and 3. So he deserves a shot. Some obviously outside contender series news yesterday. John Jones announced he was vacating the light heavyweight title. Is that official? Is that? It's official, yeah. Okay. So I actually, tonight while we were here, I went live on Sports Center in between one of the fights and announced all that. So Dominic Reyes, Jan Blagovic for the title? <coughs> yeah, it's for the vacant title. Okay, cool. John then said, negotiation starting with you guys about heavyweight. Is that true? Could that be his next move? Well, I know that John right now wants to take time and do things that he wants to do. Um, I mean, if you follow him on Instagram, I've been doing a lot of shooting. He likes to work with these attack dogs and lifts a lot of weights. And I think he's having fun, you know, living his life a little bit. And I think when this whole heavyweight thing plays out, we'll see what, what works for him. So is that the move, having Garni versus Miocic and then see if John can slip in there? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the right outcome is going to be or the right, you know, but we'll see. 
And last thing from me, um, Anderson Silva is online, still says he wants a fight. Have you, have you guys got any plans in there? I know he said McGregor's name, he said Pettis' name. Have you got any plans for Anderson? Yeah, we're working on a, a, a fight for him coming up soon here. Yeah. He will fight again. He was, and this will, th I met with his managers the other day. This will be his last fight. Oh, okay. So he's not going to fight out his whole contract. Right. This will be his last fight. Before he retires or before you guys just part ways? No, I think he's going to retire, yeah. Okay. Listen, I don't want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not our business. That's up to him and for us to even... That's, that's up to him. Let him do this the way he wants to do it, but yeah. Do you try and get him like a marquee special fight? Because it's Anderson Silva, like for his last one, do you try and get him a bigger name and maybe a, another uh, legend? Yeah, I mean, he's, I th I, yeah, we're talking putting him in a very competitive fight that should be fun. Thank you. Dana, right here, Jim Greasehopper, cage side seat. That's 12 in, in uh, three episodes so far. That's, that's a busy season. That's a lot of new fighters. Yeah, in. yeah. I, I like it, though. I mean, when, when, I mean, that's what this show is about. The show is about giving opportunities, and, um, and uh, I, I'm excited to see how, how these kids can do in the UFC. Yeah, and you talked about in this era when they say, hey, and they're coming right up to you now. I'll fight next week, the week after, the week I after that. And that's all that... With I love on. that. It's, it's brilliant. I mean, if you, if you can really do it, when you think about some of the fighters back in the day, and I'm talking boxing, some of these guys used to fight every weekend. You know what I mean? Some would fight two or three times a month. Um, that's how people remembered you. You know, that's how people know who you are. I mean, we, we talked about this several times, I think, but Shemayoff... The guy had 30,000 followers. He has 450,000 followers now. He fought twice in a week or 10 days, something like that. A couple more. Um, the hangover, the buzz after the weekend, man. I mean, I think fight fans everywhere needed that fight on Saturday night, Steep A in D.C. Just your thoughts after a couple of days of, of taking that all in. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, it was awesome. It was, it was the fight that I thought it would be. It was the fight that I expected the two best heavyweights ever to have. And... Uh, you know, the, the eye pokes that both guys got are unfortunate. You know, you don't ever want to see that happen in a big fight like that. But still, it was an incredible fight. Yeah, two class acts for sure. Last one for me, big day today, Korean Zombie and Ortega, and then Blades and Derek Lewis. Those are two big fight announcements. Just want to get your thoughts on those. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Uh, obviously, good fights. Uh, you know, Blades look good. Uh, and, and actually, no, was his last fight the one where he was – Fucking exhausted, and yeah, I didn't yeah. love that fight. That's right. Yeah, he was talking all kinds of shit that week, and then that fight. I forgot about that. Derek Lewis just looked good, so hopefully Blades gets in shape for this one, and uh, and uh, should be a good fight. All right, thank and you. then obviously Zombie Ortega is ridiculous, and we've been waiting for this one for a long time. Um, you know, that is a very very fun matchup. And then the Izzy and Paulo posted on fight the of the year. They That's the fight of the year. They say Sunday. Does that mean? Fight Island, or you ready to let that cat out of the bag yet? They said Sunday? It says Sunday on some of the posters that I've been seeing on social media. Does that mean it's Fight Island? I don't know. I mean, yeah, it was, uh, listen. Oh, Australia, it's Sunday. Yeah. It would be Sunday in Australia. Good catch? No, he caught it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dana. <laughs> Thanks. Just a uh, couple quick and easy ones. When you look at the two brothers, they're both fighting in the same division. Do you guys let them fight in the same division? Let it go, play, let it sort of play itself out, or do you kind of push one brother? Because uh, Lewis was saying he could go down to lightweight. Do you let that sort of play itself out and see where the brothers decide, or would you sort of suggest one of them, hey, maybe start looking at maybe another division? Well, I think that um, I, I think you let them that let them figure that out, let them decide, and see what they come up with. And I know we always uh, just touch base with you. I know we saw you last week. Any update on the Ultimate Fighter? Any, anything's moving any forward? No, no, no. Yeah, no. I'm, nothing, nothing from last week. And uh, finally, you know, kind of touching on what he said, a lot of these contracts are just kind of coming and kind of coming. We're seeing people uh, being released of contracts as well. It, but this isn't a, hey, I'm going to take five this week. We need to get rid of five fighters. This is kind of the, the ones that are coming are, are sort of new batch of fighters. They're not really counting against the active roster or do you take yeah that no it's oh yeah it's all a numbers game i mean we have to give everybody three fights a year so you can only have so many people under contract um yeah so as as fighters are coming you know like you said you know we're getting now eight nine fighters so should fighters worry as as these numbers keep growing that 
numbers are going to start being thinned out as well? This is the fourth season. We've done four seasons of this show. This, the, I mean, this is how it works. Been like this for 20 years. Um, every once in a while, you'll see a huge cut. We'll, we'll go through and, you know, there'll be 14, 15 guys cut in a week, you know, stuff like that. It's just, that's the nature of the beast. Dana? Uh, how many fights does Anderson has in his, his contract? Uh, two. I think he's got two left. But he's going to fight just once, right? I think so. I, I just said we'll let him talk about that. That's up to him. Is he going to fight this year? Yes. Here, uh, Abu Dhabi? I don't know. We, we, the fight's not done yet. No idea any kind of opponent he's going to have? Uh, Uriah Hall. Uh, hi, Dana. I, I know you said earlier in the week that you're still working on the Jair against uh, Sabit fight. Uh, is there any update there? And if if you see the winner of that fight or Brian against Zombie as the next con contender, whatever uh, it happens with, uh, with Volkanovski. Who, who was the first two you asked me about? Jair and Sabit. Jair Rodriguez and Sabit. Jair and Sabit? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. We, today was matchmaking, actually, yes. And we're still working on that fight. We, 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 we want to do the Yair B fight, so we're waiting for Yair to get healed. But you still want it as a five-round fight, I, I guess, because... I, I, don't, I don't know how it's going to end up playing out, but yeah, in, in, in a perfect world, yes, I would like it to be five rounds. And in the uh, same manner, uh, what do you think about uh, Moreno against uh, Perez fight? Do you think that one could be the next contender, uh, Brandon Moreno and Alex Perez? I don't, I don't know, yeah, I don't know. Depends on depends on what happens. Oh, they're fighting the same night as Cody and. Uh, I, I, you're, I, you're asking me to predict what I, I can't. I, I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Dana. Okay. Thank you, guys.